So the prosperity gospel and the God of Mammon. This prosperity gospel and the God of Mammon is what we are examining. And that's the whole series. But today's message is balancing the prosperity message. Balancing the prosperity message. We will be able to balance it. I don't know. <laughs> Let's wait and see. Can we balance the prosperity message? Will it be possible to balance the prosperity message? Uh, we'll, we'll wait and see. So, as usual, let's go ahead and take a look at uh, one of the videos that will help us to, you know, see how this message is killing the church in Africa today. And the false message, the false message that our so-called geos and pastors in Africa are teaching that are not really the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, that don't really represent the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, but rather, you know, it's the gospel of mammon. Is the gospel of mammon. And I'm going to use another video here to prove to you that what these people are doing is actually using greed to captivate people's hearts and, you know, enslave people, actually making people into slaves uh, because of this, their, you know, mammon doctrine. Okay, let's have a look here. And, uh, the prophet has so seed to projects and so seed to various seeds. But to pay your tithe and sow your seeds, let the two work together, hand in glove. A round off with some questions people ask, what is the tithe? Genesis 28 verse 22, it is the tenth, the tenth, the tenth. All you give me a tenth of it, I will give you. So the tithe is a tenth of your income. Second question, what am I to tithe? Okay, let's let's uh, start the examination. Let's begin to analyze what is going on here because I discovered that a lot of people watch these things, but they don't even see anything wrong in them. They don't even see, you know, what are the things that are wrong in these doctrines. So let's, let me help you, let me hold you by the hand, and we're going to examine all the things that the guy, the, the man of God, or the guy, the brother, or the pastor is talking about, so that you'll be able to see what are the wrong practices that are, that are here. So here we go. Prophets are so seed to projects, and so seed to various seeds, but you pay your tithe and sow your seeds. Let the two work together, hand okay. in glove. Hand in glove, hand in glove. And in glove is you must pay your tithe and then sow seeds. Sow seed for building, for project, sow seeds, what do they call it? Seeds for feed of seed of faith, prophet seed. Those are the seeds you have to sow. I mean, this is disheartening. This is simply disheartening. So what would that give you at the end of the day? So all those seeds is talking about let's hear, let's hear the seeds he's talking about here. Prophets are so seed to projects and so well, seed to the prophet, you so seed to prophet, so seeds to project. Various seeds. So various seeds. And you know those seeds, you want one of the seeds they are sowing. So those seeds. And then still pay your tithe. You see, there is a deception, a huge deception going on in these African churches. And it's coming from the so-called prosperity gospel from America. What they are talking about sowing seed. First of all, I'm sure you all know this. When they talk about sowing seed, they are talking about giving money. So these people are controlled by money. Money is their focus. Money is their love. Money is their passion. Money is their motivation. They are obsessed by money. Why should you always relate seed sowing to money? What has seed got to do with money? In the Bible, only on rare occasion do you see seed being referred to or, you know, regarded as money. Most of the time, seed is the word of God. And also, seed is the practical seed. Practical seed that you take to go and plant in your in your field. 
So, but why is it that every time these people speak about seed, they are talking about your money? And what is that rubbish showing prophet seed? Who is a prophet? We are not living in the Old Testament for Christ's sake. We are no more in the Old Testament. There is no prophet. There, we don't have prophets anymore. There is no prophet to go and take seed to. There is no prophet to go and give money to. Everybody could be used in the prophetic office. No special prophet that are sitting somewhere, you know, that you need to go and serve. If anybody is using prophet offering and trying to use the model of the, of the, the Old Testament, either the person is totally deceived or they are just being mischievous. They are trying to rob you. They are trying to scam you. This is scamming right in the church of God. These people are scamming the people of God right in the church. But even the idea of seed as money is scam. Okay, you should go and pay your prophet seed. You should pay this your seed. Pay all kind of seed, building seed. And the, 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 the thing that they used to get people is that they call it seed and trying to make you think that if you sow, you will reap. And it's always in connection with money. What you sow, you reap. Where does that come from? That if you sow money, you reap money. How many of you have been sowing money? And how much have you reaped? If you have reaped, why do you need to work? If you need to sow money to reap money, why do you need to go to work? You don't need to go to work. Just go and sow. And you reap. No, my dear. You, for you to get money, you need to work for money. And it is your work that is sowing, not giving money to somebody that is sowing. It is going to work on your field, to cultivate your ground, to, you know, put your efforts, to be diligent in what you do. That is the sowing. Go and do investments. Go and, you know, uh, you know build a factory. Go and start a process of production. Go and create uh, some goods, some services. That is sowing. Not giving your hard-earned money to somebody sitting in church just because it's saying in the name of Jesus. Nobody is superior to you, by the way. You can pray just as much as the, whoever pastor the, the East can pray too. Don't let these people steal away your money. They are crooking up ways to steal away your money. But then what he is saying, this guy, what he is saying here is that giving seeds, like all those seeds you are given, is not enough. That besides seeds, you've got to pay your tithe and offering. Besides giving your... So don't say that because you are giving seeds that you will not give tithe and offering. What he's trying to say is that the fact that you are giving seeds, building seed, uh, prophet seed, this other seed, apart from that, you should see, go and give another amount of money as your tithe. So you are paying tithe on one hand. So apart from paying tithe, you should see, go and find extra money. You're already paying tithe, right? But then go and look for extra money to go and be given and see. Because that is working on your greed so that, you know, they will tell you that tithe is your obligation. It's what you need that to give to God. But the seed is what makes you to reap. That is all rubbish. Rubbish, everything that is targeting, you know, the purpose is that you take all the money to them. If they had said, okay, take your tithe and offering to wherever you want. If they don't have any interest, you think they will be pre preaching it so passionately? If you, if you had needed to take your tithe and offering to anywhere you want, not to their church, would, do you think they would have been preaching it so passionately? If, if, if the seed was not supposed to be coming back to them, do you think they would have been talking about this every Sunday? The only reason they are talking about this is because they have an interest in it. They have something to gain from it. It is in their interest because all the sowing you are sowing is coming to them. And whatever you are giving, the tithe and offering is going to them. That's why they have interest in talk, to talking about it. And that's why they keep on talking about it. Go on. So they keep on talking about it because they, they, you know, they need you to be bring, to keep on giving to them, bringing to them without relenting. You always need to give to them and bring to them. 
That is the fallacy in this thing. If you, if it is about preaching, about giving, and saying, go and give to other people, go and give to the poor, go and give to the needy, don't give to me, don't bring here. That is a genuine, you know, preaching. That you know, then you will say, okay, these people are real men of God. But when they are telling you that you have to, you have to give, and that giving has to be to them. That's fraud. You shouldn't be, you know, deceived to the extent of giving to the same person that has an interest in it. This is a, this, they have an interest in whatever they are preaching. It should be something that is preached in a way that they don't have anything to gain from it. Then that is preaching. But when they are preaching and they are the ones that have something to gain, it's a conflict of interest, it's called. And when people have conflict of interest, they cannot be sincere. Even in the society, go to, you know, in the society, every day. When you have a conflict of interest, you are not allowed to take decision in it. When it is a conflict of interest, you are, you are the one preaching, and you are the one telling people to go and bring, and then you are the one telling them where to bring to, <laughs> and then you are the one collecting, and you are the one that giving it. Ah, ah, everything is all in you. Is that not robbery? Is that not clear enough? Is that not? Prophets are so seen to projects and so seen to tell your seeds, but to pay your tithe and sow your seeds. So let the two work. You see, it's greed. The greed, the idea of the greed there is you have to do the, all of them. You know, they are not satisfied. You see, it is greed and lust that is never satisfied. Greed and lust is never satiable. You can never satisfy greed. So you have to give the seed, give that seed, give the seed, give that seed, and then bring tithe and offering as well. They are never satisfied. They are not going to be satisfied. It doesn't matter how much you are bringing. They are still going to keep on convincing you to bring more and more because it's all about greed. That was someone else. To the prophet and so seed to projects and so seed to tell your seeds, but to pay your tithe and sow your seeds. Let the two work together, hand in glove. Stop. You see how to tithe profitably. You see they are all using your your lust. Yeah, Have a look at what they are saying here. This is all the whole idea here. You see, you see what they have written. How to tithe profitably. It's, they are trying to manipulate your greed. They are trying to use your lust to, 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 you know, to rob you. They are saying how to tithe profitably. So how do I tithe for profitably? Pay your tithe. Sow your seed. <laughs> and everything is to them. Give the money to them. Bring the tithe to them. Bring the seed to them. And then you will, be, you will get profit. You will get profit. I guess you are the one they are taking the tithe from. How will you get profit when they are taking from you? Sow your seed. You are the one giving the seed. You are the one giving the tithe. They are collecting from you. They are the one who get profit, not you. You are the one who get broke. That's the idea. You get to be broke and they get to be profit. They get the profit. That is the truth if you want to know the truth about the whole matter. Mention it. It's yours. And so seed to projects, and so seed to tell your seeds, but to pay your tithe and sow your seeds. Let the two work together, hand in glove. See, I've, I've, round off with some. Can you see these people here? I mean, it's such a sad development. These people here are Nigerians. They live in a country where the average income is two dollars a day, and all these people have relatives. They have family members, they have villages and towns and states where they come from, where the people are just living in abject poverty. They have widows, they have uh, orphans, they have people who are out of school. All these people, they represent some constituencies. In all their constituencies and where they are living, even their neighbors, where they, in their neighborhood, they have people who are in desperate need. Do you know they are not even being told to go and give to those people? They are not being encouraged to go and eradicate those poverty. They are not being encouraged to go and send those children back to school. 
They are not being told that their tithe and offering is meant for the poor, is meant for the widows, is meant for the, for the orphans. That their tithe and offering is meant for those children that are out of school. That is what they are supposed to be told. And these people listening to the, by, by, by the time these people listen enough to these so-called men of God, they become absolutely insensitive to their environment. They become insensitive to the needs of their environment. They become egocentric, more egocentric. And the only kind of giving they are giving is giving to the rich. Whereby we read the other day that anybody who gives to the rich will come to poverty. Anybody that gives to the wealthy is the same as someone who is an oppressor. If you are giving your money to people who already have money, you are an oppressor. If you are giving your money to people who already have money than you, you are going to come to poverty. The only people God is saying you should bring your money to are to people who are less privileged than you. Who are in poverty, who are in destitution, who are in need. Those are the people that we are not preaching that we should go and give to. We have turned the Bible upon its head. We have raped the Bible. We are using the Bible to only profit ourselves. And the people that we are supposed to be preaching the truth to, we are preaching our, you know, our adulterated Bible, to, I mean, you know, gospel to them. And this is not the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the gospel of Mammon. It's yours. And so seed to projects and so seed to tell your seeds, but to pay your tight and sow your seeds. Let the two work together, hand in glove. A round off with some questions people ask what is the tight? Genesis 28, verse 22. It is the tent, the tent, the tent. Oh, no, give me a Let, okay. Let's see Genesis 28, 22. And this stone which I have set. For a pillar shall be God's house, and of all that thou shalt give me, I will surely give the tent, uh, give the tent unto thee. Now, they are not the man is not telling people the story that is here. This is not tight. This is the story of Jacob. And what is Jacob saying here? When he say, oh, and this stone which I have set a pillar as a pillar shall be God's house, and of all that thou hast given me, I will surely give you that. What is happening? He was making a vow. What is happening here is that he was making a vow to God. He was telling God, you know, that was at the time when his brother was chasing after him. And, you know, was trying to kill him. And he told, he, then he had, a, he had an encounter with God there in that place, you know, called Bethel. And he was giving God his word that if you see me through as I travel to a foreign land and you protect me and you bring me back safely, that I will come back to this place and build you a house in this place. And this stone will be a memorial of that this is the place where I will build the house for you. As my gratitude that you will wash over me, you will keep me, you will save me, and you will bring me back here safely. And as a result of my gratitude as well, I decide to offer to you 10% of everything that you bless me with. But that is on the condition, if you read the verses before, that's in Genesis 28, read the old chapter of Genesis 28, you will see that he's talking about if God will bring him back safely from his sojourn, he was giving a vow to God. He was giving a vow to God. He is, is not tight. But in my, in my country today, people are now using this as an example of tithing. But it's not tithing. There is a difference between vow and tithing. What is a vow? If you do this to me, I will do this to you. If you will wash over me and protect me, bring me back, bless me, I offer to do this. To that is a vow. That is not a, that, that's not a tithing question. So, but, but our people just want to manipulate. And this is what they, this man is using as his argument for tithing. Let's have a prophet and sow seed to projects and sow seed to tell your seeds, but to pay your tithe and sow your seeds. Let the two work together, hand in glove. 
out of which some questions people ask. What is the tithe? Genesis 28, verse 22. It is the tenth. The tenth. The tenth. <laughs> Stop. You give me it. This is the tenth. The tenth. <laughs> I've just explained to you what that tenth means. What this man is talking about. This is Jacob's story. And he was vowing to God. So if this is the tent, we should we should take this as then we have to all of us should have to go and build church for God as well. Because he said this is a stone and I'm going to build a house of God for him. So we should all be building a house for God. If we are going to use that verse, we should use the old verse. Okay, continue. A tenth of it I will give you. So the tithe is a tenth of your income. You see? Second question, <laughs> what am I to tithe? Some will say, is it only my salary? If people give me a gift or give me a, a cash gift, am I to tithe it? What am I to tithe? Genesis 14 verse 20. Abraham gave, gave the tithe of all. 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 Stop, 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 stop. You see? Ah, she naked, I bless you. Tithe of all. You know what that means? Nikita, come here please, Nikita. That means what they teach people. Let's say Nikita is a student. He's a student, right? He's a pupil. He's go, he goes to school. Do you know what people tell, what these pastors tell people in my, in my country is that if I am your parents, Nikita, and I give Nikita $100 as his pocket money, as his money for school, this is Nikita's money for school. Take it. Uh, you know, they, these pastors are so manipulative. They are so greed conscious, conscious that they are so overtaken by greed that anything that comes to your hand, they want, they want the touch of it. So they say, you have to go and give a tithe of that money despite the fact that I am his parent. I go to the same church. I have already given tithe from that money. He doesn't make, make money. He doesn't have income. He doesn't work. But we still are twisting the arms of the little boy to take what he has from him. And then, what is even worse is this. Nikita, let's say Nikita is a university student. Nikita needs to pay for his school fees. Needs to pay this as a school fees. This is for the school. Now, what is school fees? School fees is not an income. Even if it is an income, school fees is not an income to Nikita. School, school fees is an income to the school. To the people who is going to you, Nikita is going to give it to. It might be an income to the school, but it's not an income to Nikita. Even to the school, the whole of the school fees will not be an income. Maybe a percentage of it. Because a lot of them will be expensive. So, but what these men are talking about is that if I give you a school fees, you have to pay, dash your money into that school fees. That is evil, improper. That is actually stealing. Because that money belongs to your parents. And your parents are paying for your school fees after they have already paid their own tithe. And they are paying for that school fees as their labor is your responsibility. It's not your money. That school fees is not your money at all. It is your responsibility to just obey, take that money to the school, and use it as speculated, as, uh, as, as specified. But what they will tell you in these churches is they will twist, you know, twist your arms and rob you of your money and tell you it is tight. You have to give tight because, you know, anything that comes to your hand, you have to pay tight of it. Now, what is another danger here? Another danger here is that you have to pay for your house rent. Or you have to pay for your children's school fees. And you have to pay for your tickets, for your transport. Where will you take the money from? You said, well, I don't have money to pay tight right now because the money I have is for my house rent. You know what they will tell you? No. You don't pay your house rent, go and pay tight. <laughs> How could you pay tight when they will chase you away from the house? Go out. You have to, if, if you have $100 and 
and the hundred dollars is for your house rent, it means you don't have tight. You go pay for your house rent. You don't have tight, my dear. If you need to pay for your school fees, for the school fees of your son or your daughter, and it is one thousand dollars, and you only have one thousand dollars, you don't have tight. Go and pay the school fees. That is it. Don't let anybody manipulate you and put you into trouble. And a lot of people are already been put into trouble. So that's what these people are talking about. Everything that is in your hand, you must go and use it to pay time. And that's how they rob you, put you in de into debt, and all that. Let's, let's hear it again, Pastor. The prophets are so seed to projects, and so seed to various seeds. But you pay your tight and sow your seeds. Let the two work together, hand in glove. A round of which some questions people ask, what is the tithe? Genesis 28, verse 22, it is the tenth, the tenth, the tenth. All you give me a tenth of it, I will give you. So the tithe is a tenth of your income. Second question, what am I to tithe? Some will say, is it only my salary? If you will give me a gift or give me a cash gift, am I to tithe it? What am I to tithe? Genesis 14, verse 20. Abraham gave him the tithe of all. All. Stop. Stop. You see the emphasis? All. 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 The emphasis is about all. You see the greed? You see the greed? It's all about getting all. Everything they can get from you. But let's look at the scripture he's using. The scripture is using Genesis 14, 20. Let's look at it. And blessed be the most high God which had delivered thy enemies into thy hand, and he gave him tithes of all. Now, this is Abraham, and he's talking about, this is talking about the situation with Melchizedek. That's why, don't just believe them by reading one, one verse alone. Read the whole chapter. Read the whole chapter. And by the time you read the whole chapter, you will discover that all, all, all that they are talking about, is not all by any means. He's only talking about all out of the spoils of the war. There was a, you know, before the war, Abraham had a lot of stuff. A lot of riches, cattle, you know, inheritances, wealth, money, and all that. They will not tell you that Abraham never paid tithe from all his wealth. Abraham didn't pay tithe from his wealth. And Abraham didn't pay tithe from his cattle. Abraham didn't pay tithe from all his money and riches. He, didn't, he never paid tithe from any of those. So but when you read this scripture, you will discover from all of what? This is talking about all of a specific thing. What specific thing? But So let's say, Abraham had all this wealth on this side. He didn't pay tight from others. But he went, when he went to one particular battle, in that battlefield, he collected spoils of war from it. Took it and then met Melchizedek and paid the tithe, 10% of all the spoil that he got from that war. Now, you could not even say those things were ease because he got them from this, you know, from other people. They were not even his own. So he paid tithe from that. But he didn't pay tithe from his own properties and from his own inheritances and from his own riches. But the way these our pastors are preaching it is making you to think. <laughs> that you've got to pay 10% time of everything you have. They will not allow you to read the whole chapter and they will not even explain to you that Abraham didn't pay tithe of all he had. He only paid tithe of that particular spoil. Now, did Abraham go to war after that? Of course he did. Did he pay tithe from the spoils of other wars? He didn't. So why that particular one? 
Why only one? Did Abraham go to wars before that? Yes, he did. Did he have spoil of war before that? Yes, he did. Why didn't he pay tithe from the previous wealth and free previous uh, 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 spoils of war? Because this is a symbolical thing. This is talking about a symbol of the Lord Jesus Christ. Melchizedek only came in one instance to symbolize the Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ, just like Sabbath is a symbol of the Lord Jesus Christ. So also in Melchizedek, that he is our tithe. And we are supposed to give to him not just 10%, but our whole life, our whole life we belong to him. So when you have accepted and give your life, your totality to Christ Jesus, that is what tithe means. You know, it, it, it is Christ that we give the title. And it is, you know, Melchizedek is only a symbol of that, of, that, uh, of that Christ. In the New Testament, the Christ has come. So we don't need tithe like that anymore. We need to give a tithe in form of our lives to Jesus. And he is the high priest. He is the Melchizedek of the New Testament. So, but the way they preach it is, Blessed be the most high God, which are delivered, and they just emphasize one word, all. But he's talking about all the spoil. 10% of all the spoil, not 10% of all he had. Big difference. Continue. All provided is an income. Whether that income came by favor or came by salary, it no. was a tithe. You see, they are saying, whether that in it doesn't matter how that income comes. But that is a, the total opposite of what uh, Abraham did. Abraham didn't pay tithe of his income. Abraham didn't pay tithe of every income. But they are saying you have to pay tithe of every income no matter where it's coming from. Either it is coming from tithe or it's coming from, I mean, it's coming from this. No, but it was the Bible tells us it's paid tithe only of the spoil, of a particular one. Okay? <laughs> is using his life as an example that he's got some results. So because I have results and he's crediting the results that he's got to tithe. So my own question is produce for me at least 10 people who have also done tithing. He said three years. Okay, let's find people and I'm sure there are so many people in that church that have done tithing for more than three years. And I'm sure that there's not a single one of them who has the same result that he has. Because you have the same, re this, this result that he has is not as a result of the tithe that he is giving. The result that he has is a result of collecting tithe from everybody else. It's only because he's collecting, that's why he has all he has. Not because he's giving anything. And let me tell you the truth, what are you even giving? You are not the one giving. You are collecting tithe money from everybody, and maybe from that, from their money, you give tithe. But not you. You didn't give tithe. If you give tithe, if you want to give tithe, it has to be from your own money that you made, work for, labor for. But if you are giving tithe from their own money, you are not giving tithe. They are the ones giving it again. Only you are using it with your own hands to do it. And who are you giving the tithe to? Are you giving it to your church? So you are giving it back to yourself. Are you giving it to other people? Then it is their tithe, it is their money that you are giving, not yours. You see, a lot of manipulation going on. And it's a pity that people don't ask questions. People don't ask questions. Because if they do it faithfully for three years, 
produce even one, not even ten, one person who has the same result as you have. Of course they cannot because they are not collecting from all the people the way you are collecting from all the people. What gives you the result of what you have is not what you gave tight, it's because you are collecting from people. It's your restriction, that's it. And to make me to do it faithfully these 30 years and to see the results happening to the people. Because there are people in church for 20 something years, they can't understand. They keep a pastor praying for me, things are not working. Now, when was the last time you tightened for three years non stop? No. Pray for me, things are how can this work? It can't work. It cannot work. Stop. You can't. So, you, they, you see, these are the fear factors that they are bringing upon people in Africa. They say if things cannot work. How can things work? Things can never work for you. Why? Because you don't pay tithe consistently for three years, minimum. So what about all these Europeans that don't pay tithe, not even consistently for three days, for three months? Talk less, talk three years. <laughs> they don't even pay tithe at all, at all, forever. Some of them have never even paid tithe one time. And they are having generational blessings. Their grand-grandfather started some business 100 years ago, 200 years ago. Those businesses are still prospering. Despite that, no, nobody paid tithe. All these people in Europe, all these people in America, all of us want to be like them. We want to have their own standard of living. And they don't pay any tithe. We will pay tithe. We are the ones running to their countries to want to live like them. <laughs> who is fooling who? It will not work. Nothing will ever work for you if you don't pay tithe. It's primitive. 30 years. And to see the results happening to the people. Because there are people in church for 20 something years, they can't understand. They keep a pastor praying for me, things are not working. Now, when was the last time you tightened for three years non stop? No. Pray for me, things are how can this work? It can't work. It cannot work. You can't break the laws of God and make things work. So look, things are working everywhere else apart from Nigeria. You see, these kind of messages can only hold water where things don't work. Things are working for everybody in America, in Europe, everywhere where they don't, they don't even believe in this thing. Japan, China, China, things are working. And that's not what makes things work. <laughs> there are principles that make things work. Not tight. Okay? It is the tight of all. Where should I tight? You see, they try to... They try to make you guilty. That so is because he is talking about some people who have been in church for twenty years and they are saying things are not working. They want to put the blame on you. They say, "Oh, okay, because you miss one tithe. Did you miss one tithe in three years? Oh, yeah, that's why you didn't do it consistently. Yeah, that's why now they always try to look for some reasons to make you to be blamed for it. You know, okay, so somebody said, "Okay, I don't have the result that you have." And I've been doing tight. Oh, well, maybe something is behind it. Maybe you didn't do something right. Maybe you're doing something wrong. Maybe you have some demons somewhere. You see, it's all about manipulation. Where should I tight? Malachi chapter 3 verse 10. It is the place of your meat, the storehouse. The storehouse is the place of your spiritual feeding and nourishment. Anywhere your destiny is being enhanced and your instructions are being released and your life is being groomed, that is the place of the tide. Stop, stop, stop. How? I have a whole message on that. Two hours message on what is a storehouse. What is a storehouse? And where is it written that you must bring tide only to the place where you are being fed, where you are being nourished? Where is it written? In the Old Testament, even when tithe was eligible, you only only ten percent of it is taken by the priest, but the rest of the ninety percent must go to the poor, to the widows, to the orphans, to the strangers, people who are in need. Those are the people you have to take it to. So even if you bring them to the church, it's just like a distribution center. Church is supposed to act like a distribution center, just like in the, they did in the Acts of the Apostles. So in the Acts of the Apostles, the things that were, were brought to the church, they were distributed to all the people who were in need. 
That's what they were supposed to be doing with it. Take the money they receive in church in Nigeria, but are they distributing everything? No, they are building buildings. They are building structures. <laughs> Instead of building lives. How often should I type? Question number four. As often as you earn. There are those who earn weekly. Nothing says it must be until the end of the month. But if you want to organize it and make it maybe weekly or daily, and they gather it together, and like everybody who collects salary, at the end of the month, they pay their tithe, you could do that. But going beyond one month, two months, three months, it gives room for a lot of laxity. Delayed obedience equals delayed blessing. Stop. See, we know why that. We know why the laxity and delayed obedience. So that you don't forget. So that you always be giving the tithe to them and all that. Yeah, we understand the game. Can I use the tithe to buy something for the church? We never saw such a license in scripture. Or you feel led to buy a speaker for the church? Go and buy it with your offerings. You feel led to buy a vehicle for the church? Go and buy it freely. But the tithe is released to God as it is. Am I communicating? Stop. So, so, that so they cannot use that money of tithe. If I feel led to buy something for the church and I give the tithe to you, why don't you use the money? What do you use the money for? Why don't you use the money to go and use it to buy the instrument? Can I say, okay, I want, I feel like using this to bless the church, but buy instrument. Go and use the money to buy instrument. They will not. They will say, no, that tithe you brought, eh? they will not use it to buy instrument. You have to go and find another money again. And after releasing the title, to go and be looking for money again to go and buy the instrument. I mean, I mean, that's just daylight robbery. I mean, they're still stingy with it. Not too stingy with their own money, with your own money. They are stingy with your own money. Your own money that you put in their hand, instead of them using it to do what you wish to do for the church, they are saying no. They, they will not explain to you where the money has gone to. <laughs> And they will be telling you to go there. They will not touch that. They will, you know, they will just take your money and then be making you to go and go and look, be looking for another money to do what you want to do for the church. What is that? That's robbery. I use my tithe to buy this. I use my tithe to do this. There was no such instruction. Hallelujah. So, no Ta such instruction to use your tithe to do this? Go and listen to my series and my teachings on tithe. Who is the tithe meant for? Go and look. You will see that in Deuteronomy 12, 14, 26, you will see that there are instructions, really. There are instructions on how to use the tithe and not in the church. Instructions on how to use the tithe to feed people is there. Instructions on how to use the tithe to take care of the orphans is there. Instructions on how to use the tithe to take care of the strangers is there. Even of slaves, even of your relatives, of your family members is there. So there are instructions on what to do with time. Hallelujah. Can I sow seeds with a tight? Tight is tight. Seed is seed. You pay your tight and sow your seed. I pay tight <laughs> and I sow seeds. I pay tight and sow Stop. See, see, see the play of words. See the jargons they are using. Eh? So whatever, you, they just want to make sure that you keep on bringing to them. So whatever you bring as tithe, they will not even consider that as seed. Whatever you bring as seed, they will not consider it as tithe. You have to bring both tithe and seed. Wow. Seeds to the prophet, seeds to, 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 to diverse kinds of seeds. But tithe is paid and seed is sown. You will never remain the same. Did you receive something? Stop. Okay. Tithe is paid, slave share. Tithe is paid. You have to pay but well, really, we are not supposed to pay anything in this kingdom. You have to, Jesus has paid it all. Uh, even the tithe. I believe in tithe and I still give tithe. I give tithe to the church. Why? Because I believe in the work of the church. But not because it is. I must pay it. It's a law or it's a curse. I pay tithe. I pay more than tithe. But I give 50, about 15% to the church and I give another 10% to people to just bless people. But... It doesn't matter what. Just what. What is in your heart. But it should be out of love for God. Out of love for people. Not because it's a law. And because you have to pay something. Okay. But let's see really what tithe. I mean what tithe and offering is supposed to be. 
useful in the church today. There is a, is a video here that is absolutely mind-blowing. And this is what tithe and offering is supposed to be used to. Every pastor, every bishop, every Jew in Africa is supposed to watch this video. Let's have a look. Rashid. <laughs> you see, this is how... Can you imagine if the churches in Nigeria will be give, writing out share, giving out money in their thousands to be looking for needy people all over Nigeria? To be looking for orphans and uh, pro, you know prostitutes and uh, widows and homeless people and just to be li li looking to give money to anybody. Just go and look for people who are in need and begin to give. Of course, our country will be changed totally. This is incredible. Well, so the prosperity gospel and the God of Mammon will not allow that. Let's go to the word of God right now. The word of God. And the message of today is balancing the prosperity message. Proverbs 13, 22. A good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children. But the wealth of the sinner is stored up for the righteous. This must be balanced. What is the balanced approach to prosperity? If we are to correct all the imbalances, of the past prosperity gospel, the following is the least. It is balanced to teach that true prosperity comes only through hard work. That is balancing prosperity message. That is a balanced message. And that is why I wrote this book, Why You Must Urgently Become a Workaholic. Why You Must Urgently Become a Workaholic. You see, it is balanced to teach that prosperity comes only through hard work. Hard work. Okay, I, there's another book that I wrote in that sense that is also talking about the fact that don't believe those people who said one day of favor is better than, you know, 10 years or something. No, no, that deception is better for you to go and... You know, and labor. It is hard work that leads to prosperity. There is a book I wrote that is called One Day of... I mean, you know, you know labor is better than... Uh, uh, labor is better than favor. And uh, work is better than vacation. You know, I think it should be somewhere there. Uh, so that is another book. So it is balance to teach that true prosperity comes through hard work. Proverbs 13, 11, wealth gained by dishonesty will be diminished, but he who gathers by labor will increase. Only he who gathers by labor will increase. Labor is what, we shouldn't run away from labor. Labor brings increase. Labor brings increase. That's Proverbs 13, 11. Wealth gained by dishonesty will be diminished. But he who gathered by labor. So, but in Africa today, they tell you, no, don't labor. If you don't have faith, that's when you labor. That you need only favor. No, sir. You need labor to be able to get increase. Labor is the only thing that leads to increase. It is true to teach diligence as the pathway to prosperity. Yes, diligence is the pathway to prosperity. Not favor. Not sitting down, we're looking for favor. No, it is diligence that leads to hard work, diligence, labor. Those are things that leads to prosperity. If they are going to teach about prosperity that way, yes, then it's a good one. If they are going to teach prosperity that prosperity comes through diligence, it is scriptural. If they are going to teach prosperity that prosperity comes through labor, it is scriptural. If they are going to teach prosperity that prosperity comes through uh Diligence, it is true. It is, it, is, it, is, it is scriptural. So that's why I wrote this book. Work is better than vacation. Work is better than vacation. Labor is better than favor. Labor is better than favor. Work is better, I mean, work is better than vacation. And uh, I should show you the other one. Why you must urgently become a workaholic. Why you must urgently become a workaholic. These are the ways that prosperity must be preached. All right, so you got it. The first one prosperity comes only through hard work. 
Secondly, prosperity comes only through labor. Thirdly, prosperity comes only through diligence. Because Proverbs 10, 4 says, He who has a slack hand becomes poor, but the hand of the diligent makes rich. The, then, next one, next point, how to balance the prosperity message. Next point, the culture of saving is a must for true prosperity. So, prosperity comes by saving. Next one, preparation and, of course, saving, not just to save for nothing, but to save for investment. The next point, why our prosperity comes, prosperity comes through preparation. Preparation and in particular financial preparation, you know, is vital to financial prosperity. We call it financial knowledge. So the knowledge of the loss of money is another way to, you know, that our prosperity comes. Next point, how prosperity comes, good debt is also a key to financial independence. You know, that's another principle of financial prosperity. You have to be taught the principle of good debt or debt. Another principle, how prosperity comes, is a clear understanding of assets and liability are crucial. You need to teach people what assets mean, what liabilities means, and what liabilities mean, and the difference between the two. The difference between asset and liability. If people who don't know this, they will never be rich. Prosperity comes through these principles. Next point, how prosperity comes. Prosperity comes through understanding of processes. Process of production is an important fruit of prosperity. So prosperity comes through process of production, understanding process of production. The next point, how prosperity comes. Prosperity comes through production of goods and services. That's the hallmark of prosperity. Produ production of goods and services. Proverbs 13, 44 says, The soul of the lazy man desires and asks nothing. If you are just desiring, you will have nothing. If you are just claiming, you will have nothing. If you are just affirming or proclaiming, you will have nothing. If you are just, you know, wishing, you will have nothing. The soul of a lazy man desires, you just through wishful thinking, you have nothing. But the soul of the diligent shall be made rich. Intelligent marketing and sales strategy is very important to money making. Also, this is another principle. Prosperity comes through marketing, through marketing and sales strategy. So, sales and marketing. Next point, designing and living by a budget is a vital key to prosperity. That's like the next point. The prosperity comes by living according to budget. Next point, learning to take advantage of opportunities also is a way that prosperity comes. So prosperity comes also by learning to take advantage of opportunities. Next point, being frugal, frugality, and taking right decisions is a key to financial prosperity. So being frugal will also lead you to financial prosperity. So let's check all over again how to balance the prosperity message. So if we want to balance the prosperity message, we must teach that hard work, prosperity only comes through hard work, not through giving to people or to pastors to tithe and offering up, comes through hard work. Number two, prosperity comes through labor. Number three, prosperity comes through diligence. Next point, number four, prosperity comes through the culture of saving and investment. Next point, prosperity comes through adequate financial knowledge or financial preparation or the loss of money. Next point, prosperity comes through you know, the knowledge of good debt, knowing the difference between good and bad debt. Taking advantage of good debt, that's how prosperity comes. Next point, prosperity comes through understanding of assets and liability. Next point, prosperity comes through understanding of processes, the process of production. Next point, prosperity comes through production of goods and services. Next one, prosperity comes uh, not by wishing, not by wishing or lusting or desiring to have, but by working out for it. Next point, prosperity comes through understanding of marketing and sales strategies. Next point, prosperity comes through budget management and living by budget. Next one, prosperity comes through learning to take advantage of opportunities. Next point, prosperity comes through being frugal. 
through frugal, being frugal, frugality. So these are the ways that prosperity comes.